Okay, so for this one, the first step is it says he translates the shape to units to the left. So we are going to take each point and translate it to units to the left. I know it's not a great copy, so kind of eyeball it a little bit. But just taking each point and put in two units to the left. Like that. Then it says to reflect that image over the y-axis. So this would be the y-axis right here. And so those points were reflecting over the y-axis. So it means that we're going to put these points the same distance from the y-axis on the other side. So this would go right here. This point is at 4. So I'm going to put it at like negative 4. And again, I realize the copy isn't that great, but I'm trying my best here. This one, it looks like it's at 7, so I'll put it at negative 7 over here. This one at 6, at negative 6. So I get this shape. So again, I just took each point and put it the same distance from the y-axis on the other side. And then it says use the connect line tool to draw this new shape, LMNOP. Okay, cool. We connect them and make the new shape. Um, these points over here aren't part of this, so I might erase them just so, I don't know, it doesn't count it wrong or something. Okay, ready for the next one? I'm going to zoom out for this one so you can see the whole problem. Okay, this one, a diagram it sh is shown, as you can see, parallel lines and a transversal. Corey uses a diagram to analyze the given statement. It says when a transversal intersects parallel lines, two angles are supplementary if and only if they are adjacent angles. Well, two angles that are adjacent are supplementary, um, but that wouldn't be the only time they're supplementary, so I just have that in the back of my mind. And then over here it says select one angle from each column to show a pair of angles that represents a counter example to this. So in order for them to supp be supplementary, they don't necessarily have to be adjacent. A counter example of that would be like this angle and this angle. These two angles would be supplementary and they're not adjacent. So over here, it wants you to just choose two angles that are supplementary but not adjacent. So FGH and GMP or PMG, I'm going to name it. And this would be a counter example. Of course, there is more options that you could choose. This is just one example of a correct answer, but there are many correct answers. Okay, the next one I showed you last week. This one has to do with constructions. Again, the copy isn't that great. It shows you have an angle right here, angle A. Um, they placed the compass at A and made these two marks B and C. And then using the same measurement, and they say they use the same measurement, they made these two marks to get point D. Okay, and then the question part is over here. It says constructing segment AD. So if you connected these two, then you would have two congruent angles, and the congruent angles would be BAD. So over here, angle BAD and angle DAC. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I can't see the whole thing. And there would be a drop down, and you just go through those choices and you determine which ones it is. So with an angle bisector, it's bisecting that angle into two equal pieces, so this side of the angle will be the same as this. And then because AD is an angle bisector, that's what it's looking for there. And then select all the lengths that are equivalent to AB. Well, AB is right here, so AC would be equivalent, yes. AD would not be the same length, so no to that. BC, no. BD, yes. And CD, yes, because it said it used the same compass measurement to make those marks. Okay. 
Then this one takes a little bit more calculations. This goes along with what you've been working on on Geometry Nation with surface area. It says a figure composed of a right cone and right cylinder with dimensions and feet is shown. What is the exact surface area in square feet? Okay, so for surface area, that's the area of all the surfaces. So we have the cone part and we have the cylinder part. So we have the cone and we have the cylinder part. See if we can spell that'd be great. Okay, so for surface area, I'd be looking at my reference sheet and surface area of a cone right here. I'm just gonna copy this equation onto my paper. So surface area of a cone is area of the base plus pi r h s. And h with this subscript s is slant height. And then surface area of the cylinder, right here, surface area equals 2 times area of the base plus perimeter times height. So surface area of the cylinder, 2 times area of the base plus perimeter times height. Okay, so one part at a time, surface area of a cone. For this image, our, the bottom of the cone actually isn't as exposed, so that's not even part of the surface area. So I'm going to just cross this part out of the equation. So for the cone part, it's just going to be pi r times the slant height. And then the radius, this radius down here would be the same as right here. So we got 1.5 right there. And so for the surface area of the cone part, it's going to be pi, radius 1.5, and the height is 2.5. So surface area equals 1.5 times 2.5 is 3.75. And I'm going to leave it in terms of pi because it says exact surface area, and pi would be the most exact. So this right here is just the cone part, which I'm going to add to the cylinder part once I find that surface area too. Okay, now I need to find the surface area of the cylinder part. Um, for the cylinder, only one base is exposed and this is not. So two times area of the base, it's just gonna be the area of one base. And then for perimeter all the way around this, the perimeter would actually be the circumference of the circle. So perimeter is actually circumference, which is pi times diameter. Area of the base, it's a circle, so area of the base would be pi r squared. Perimeter around it would be circumference, so pi times diameter times the height of the cylinder. And now I'm plugging things in. One point five squared would be two point two five, and I'm gonna just leave it in terms of pi. Three times three, nine. Leave it in terms of pi. Surface area of this cylinder part. This added together is eleven point two five pi, and that is the cylinder part. Total surface area. I need to add together the cone part with the cylinder part to get the total. So it would be 3.75 pi plus 11.25 pi equals 15 pi. That would be feet squared for surface area. And that is the answer that you'd type in the box.